let's talk about one of the best card games I've ever played. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald, and today we are going to talk about one of the best card games I've ever played. Certainly one of the best games I've played this year. This is a game that, that was just sent out to Kickstarter backers uh, over the last few months. A game called Mori by Allplay. This is a trick-taking game, and it's so good. I can't wait to tell you all about it. Mori is a game for between three and five players. You can't play this with two. Games work with kids aged 11 and up, and it only takes about half an hour to play a round of Mori. Let's take a deeper look at Mori by Allplay. Mori is a light trick-taking game, but the scoring is complex enough that there's some strategy involved, and we did sometimes. I played this a, a few times with two different groups of people, several times with two different groups of people. We really like this game. Uh, so I played it a bunch of times with two different groups. It does take some time to figure out what are the best strategies to win. You are trying to win this game by being the player who has the most points, at the end of the game and this is another one of those all play games that came with a dry erase marker and a wipe off board to keep track of your points rather than using a pad of paper you, where you have to find a pen or a pencil or something you've got a dry erase marker that came in the box and a little board like this one one of the ways that you're going to earn points or lose points every game is by winning tricks that have these symbols on them so you will gain a point for each card that you have at the end of the round that has a leaf on it, for each leaf you get a point. So this is worth two points, but you lose uh, a point for each skull that you wind up with. So the lower numbered cards, the lower ranked cards, the ones that are harder to win a hand with have more leaves on them, but the higher cards have skulls. So if you play a skull, you might win the hand, but you're going to lose that one point, potentially two points, because when you're playing with higher play counts, the cards go from 0 to 10, and the 10 cards have two skulls on them instead of one. At the start of the game, you're going to roll 10 dice. You place them on the board here like this, because whenever you win a hand, whenever you win a trick, you're going to get to draft one of these dice from the board. So that's very important, and, and these can be really helpful as you play through the game. You're going to deal out nine cards to each player, and they also get two of these twig cards. These are rot cards. Uh, they've got twigs that are tied up like an X. These are super important for points in this game. The player who finishes the round with the most of these, and not just cards that they've won, but also cards in their hand. So if they don't play them, they're stuck with these cards in their hand too, and those count towards your points as well. If you've got the most of these at the end of the round, and the round ends when the last die is taken, and you've got the most, you're going to lose a point for each of these rock cards that you're stuck with. If you have the second most rot cards, though, you gain a point for each of those cards. So you're trying to be the one who finishes the round with the second most, not the most, the second most of these. And the players who have less than that are not going to get gain or lose any points. So if in the case of a tie, if you're tied for the most, both players lose all of those points. If you're tied for the second most, both players are going to gain all of those points. But this is a game where really these X's are flying around the table and you're trying to keep track of who still has them in their hand. Mori is a must-follow trick taker. Uh, and I did a video a while back that had definitions about all of these trick taking terms and I'll link to it somewhere around here. You'll probably see it at the top of the screen somewhere. But a must follow trick taker means that if you've got a card in your hand of the suit that's been led, the first suit that's played into the trick, you have to play that card. But Mori does make it tricky because there are some cards that break that rule. So the X's will allow you to uh, break that must follow rule. If you play a, a rot card into a trick, it cannot win. So you're not going to win that hand. Somebody else is going to win it, but that's going to give them one of these cards, which could potentially lose them a lot of points or maybe gain them points when the round is all done. The highest ranked card of the lead suit is going to be the winner unless a trump card is played, a trump suit. Uh, and the trumps are kind of ranked in almost like a rock, paper, scissors kind of a style. So if the lead card is green, then a purple will trump it. It goes around the circle like this, and you've got this convenient pad that's a, just a reminder for everybody that red trumps purple and yellow trumps red, and it just goes around the circle. And like I said, the X's are always going to lose. 
So if these are the three currents that are played into the suit, if green is lead, maybe I played a three, uh, and someone else played purple, which is trump, uh, and then the third player just played whatever green card that they had left because it is a must-follow trick taker, well then the person who played this purple is going to win because it is the trump suit. They're going to gain a total of three points because you've got four leaves on here, plus there's a skull that subtracts those points by one. So you've got a total of three points here. Each time you win a hand, you're going to draft one of those dice and the dice act as cards. Now they don't have ranks on them. They're just a suit, but you can play that as a card. It's sort of, it's going to be lower than a zero. So remember if you're playing with lar a larger number of players, there are going to be some zero cards, but a, a purple zero is going to beat my purple die. The other tricky thing though about these dice is that you can use them to break the must follow rules. So if green has been led, maybe I can play this in order to, because purple trumps green, maybe I can play this die in order to win that hand. But often the dice are going to lose the hand and really you might be playing those dice in order to avoid giving up a card that has lots of leaves on it that's going to earn you some points. Play continues until the last die has been drafted from the die board and then that's the the end of that round you're going to count up the leaves and skulls on the cards that you've won in each trick as well as the cards in your hand then you're going to count up the x's in your hand that you've won in the tricks and the ones that you haven't played that you maybe drafted earlier in the game and then the next round begins. You deal, you roll the dice over again, you deal out those nine cards and the two X's, you start each round with those two X's, and then you just continue until you've played a number of rounds equal to the number of players. What skills are you working on though when you play a game like Mori? Well, like I said earlier, I did do a, a video about trick-taking games, and so in general, these are games where you are exercising those memory skills because you're counting cards. You have to remember which cards have been played in order to choose the best card that you're going to play to get the outcome that you want. But Mori is a special one because of the dice and cards that break the must follow rule and the way that those X's work when you're counting up scoring. So th there's a lot of kind of, you're not just counting cards and remembering what's been played. You're also trying really to plan ahead. You're, you're, you're budgeting your cards. There's more hand management, I think, in, in a game of Mori than there is in, in some other trick-taking games that I've played. And, and those X's really do amp up this, this strategy and the fun and the tension as you're playing through, as well as the fact that you can break the must-follow rules with the dice. So you've got memory for card counting, and then you've got those executive functioning skills, the skills and behaviors that you need to work towards a goal. That includes planning ahead. That includes budgeting those cards and trying to hang on to the ones that are going to be worth a lot of points or trying to force other players into playing those cards that are worth a lot of points. So you've, you've got a good combination of abilities here that you're working on. Final thoughts about Mori. Well, this is a game where you've got beautiful looking cards. Now the artwork is the same in the background of each suit. So whether you're playing a one or a five, if it's the red roses, it's going to have the same picture on it. But these are great looking cards with skulls and flowers. Mori is a word that means death, but it's also a word, I think in Japanese, it means forest. So you've, you've got the flowers and you've got the skulls on all of those cards. The deluxe components, so I do like the artwork, the dice are nice, uh, they're, they're a nice weight, and of course they've got the suit uh, logo on them, which I like. The deluxe components, uh, and I talked about, the, the last all play game I talked about was Lunar, and it had all of those metal pieces that were indicating who was the lead player and, and which suit was Trump. Uh, the deluxe components in this one are wooden tokens with X's on them. And this is just to help you keep track of who has the most rot cards. You know, as you win, a, if you win a couple of rot cards in a hand, you're going to take a couple of these and then you've got them stacked up in front of you. It just makes it easier at a glance. They're certainly not a necessary component, but this is the deluxe edition uh, that just makes it a little bit quicker than trying to count all the cards that are laying flat on the table. The rule breaking of the dice and the rot cards really does amp things up. It makes every turn tense and interesting. You never know, is somebody going to spend 
one of their dice are they going to save them for later uh, because they want they they don't want to take any extra x's uh if you lead with an x the other players can also play a rot card and then if everybody plays a rot card the person who led is going to wind up with all of them and that happened a bunch of times in the games that we played you know a player would think oh i think those other players have spent their their rot card so i'm not going to get stuck with this but sometimes you wound up grabbing that anyway so uh really really interesting trade-off in terms of the points uh, and scoring you've got the high cards that make it easy to win a hand but they've got skulls on them you've got the lower cards that you're trying to get the other players to give you but you might want to hang on to them the fact that you're counting points that are still in your hand at the end of the round because you've got these dice that you're spending instead of cards they oh this game it's just so interesting uh and as i said it's tense and you'll sit and stare at your cards and wonder oh should i play should I play my X now? Should I save it for later? If I play this, then that's... Oh my gosh, what an interesting, interesting game. Uh, are there downsides? Well, a couple. I do think that four and five players is better than three. Now, I played it with multiple groups, but only at a three-player count. I just couldn't get four people together all at the same time to play this one. Uh, so I, I think with four, it would be really good just because you've got the higher numbered cards, you've got more skulls out there with the, the higher numbers, and it makes it a little bit harder to keep track of where those X's are going. It, it is such an interesting game, even with three, but I think with four, even better. So a higher play count is better. That was tough for me to, to organize. I, I wasn't, it's hard enough sometimes for me to get three people to play a game, let alone four. So that's certainly a downside. The other thing I would say, is a downside with this game really and and as i said at the beginning this is one of the best card games i've played in ages it's definitely one i think it's one of my top five trick takers i've ever played um but even though i do really like the card art on all of the main cards in the game boy those x cards you really don't want to get them they're so boring and there's you know these are the cards that aren't very nice all the other cards are good looking the deluxe components, I mean, they're they're made out of wood and they're stamped with the X logo, but they're kind of light and they're not as interesting, I would say, art-wise or, or even weight-wise as the other components in the game or as the components in Lunar that we talked about before. It makes sense, though, if we're talking about these as rot tokens and we're talking about a forest, you want them to be made out of wood. Uh, but they're kind of light and there's there's not a lot to them and the, the X, the twig logo just isn't very pretty. But those are minor knocks, I think, on a game that is just fantastic. We had so much fun playing this one. It comes in that little tiny box so it's easy to lug around. It came with the wipe off board and the dry erase marker so you don't have to look for a pad and pencil. You don't need those. You've got Anyway, what a great game. We just had so much fun playing it. So uh, All Play has, has really made something special, I think. This is a game that's gotten pulled out a few times already when people come over. Even though I'd already played it and kind of made my notes for the video, uh, I'm still playing this one, and it's going to continue to get pulled out. So one of my favorite trick takers. I definitely would recommend it to anyone who likes these kinds of games. It might even win over folks who aren't super enthusiastic about trick takers, but who like other kinds of strategic card games. Um, what a good time we had playing this one. If you have any comments or questions about Mori or Brains on Games, if you want to set up a, a meetup uh, at Breakout in March, that can definitely be arranged. Leave a comment in the comment section below the video. Of course, you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca. Brainsongames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will go. The previous ones are up there already. Brains on Games is the X handle and the Facebook page and the Instagram feed, so we're all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me, and hopefully I'll see you next time.